Good day, good people. My name is Gabo Sekwele and I'm an online math tutor here to help young children turn their struggles into their successes. Today we are going to be discussing a topic that does not have as much information out there as it should. We will be talking about dyscalculia. We are going to start off by understanding what dyscalculia actually is and then I'll be sharing information that can help you determine whether your child has dyscalculia or whether they're just simply struggling in math. Although I will be sharing quite a few symptoms of dyscalculia in this video, please do not use this video as a means to diagnose your child with this learning disability. To get an official diagnosis, your child needs to be evaluated by a professional. Just use this video as a guide. Now firstly, dyscalculia is a math learning disorder. The same way dyslexia is a disorder that makes it hard for people to learn how to read and interpret words, Dyscalculia is a disorder that makes it very hard for people to learn math and interpret numbers. So if you're a parent and your child is doing very bad in math, you may be wondering to yourself, does my child have dyscalculia or not? And today I hope to help you figure that out. To do this, we are going to be talking about the symptoms of a child that has dyscalculia. And we'll compare these symptoms to a child who is just simply struggling in math. A common problem that people with dyscalculia struggle with is being able to connect a number to its symbol. So for example, the value of the symbol that you are seeing on your screen right now is 4. However, to a person with dyscalculia and a child with dyscalculia, you might as well have drawn a square and asked them what the value of that symbol is. And that is because dyscalculia makes it hard for you to connect a value or a number with a symbol. People with dyscalculia also struggle to connect math symbols such as the addition sign, the subtraction sign, the multiplication sign and the division sign to their purpose. You could put in front of them a division sign and they would not know what it means. To them, it's just a drawing on paper. Now, a young person who is just bad at math and does not have dyscalculia may not have this problem. So if your child can readily connect symbols to values or math symbols to their purpose, that might indicate that your child does not have dyscalculia. The second indicator of dyscalculia we will be discussing today is when a person is unable to put numbers in the proper numerical order. They struggle to understand which number is bigger than which. So if ever you've asked your child to put numbers in numerical order and they struggled with that, that may be an indication that they have dyscalculia. However, if your child can easily put numbers in numerical order with no struggles at all, that means they understand which values are higher than which and they may not have dyscalculia. Another common issue that people with dyscalculia have is number sense or what I like to call math's common sense. The general facts that the average person can remember in math are things that people with dyscalculia will struggle to remember. For example, I could ask you what 10 plus 10 is. The average person can easily say the answer is 20. You don't even have to think about it because you have a degree of common sense in math. However, people with dyscalculia can struggle with finding even the answer to a question that simple because they don't have number sense. So if you've noticed that there are some common sense things in math that your child struggles with, that may be a sign that they have dyscalculia. However, if you ask your child simple math questions and they're able to answer them with ease, then your child probably does not have dyscalculia. In fact, that kind of leads us to the next symptom that we're going to be discussing, which is that people with dyscalculia struggle to notice patterns. What you're seeing on my screen right now is a number pattern. And in this pattern, the average person will know the number that comes after 40. The reason for this is because you noticed a pattern in the numbers. A person with dyscalculia may not have this ability. They tend to struggle with seeing a pattern in any sequence and therefore would have to rely on counting to find the answer. So if you've noticed that your child struggles with noticing patterns and sequences, it can be a numerical sequence, it can be a visual sequence, such as the one that you're seeing on your screen dominoes, then that is a sign that they may have dyscalculia. But the average child who struggles in math severely may not necessarily have this problem. So if your child can notice patterns in various sequences, then chances are they do not have dyscalculia. Symptom number six that we will be discussing is centered around your child's counting skills. When trying to solve most math sums, people with dyscalculia tend to rely on counting in ones. And one of the easiest ways to keep track of that is by counting with their fingers. In most sums, their first option is to count with their fingers. Now the truth is counting with fingers is a technique that most children use. However, if your child relies way too heavily on this technique, that may indicate that they have this math learning disability. Just a quick question for you. Have you noticed that people with dyscalculia struggle with the very basic parts of mathematics? That's just because having dyscalculia is not just being very bad at math. 
It's so much more than that. In fact, symptoms of dyscalculia can go beyond math. For example, they may struggle with being able to read time on an analog clock or even on a digital clock. They can struggle with handling money, counting out how much change they need to give out. They can have struggles with determining right from left. They can have issues with coordination. These and so much more are symptoms that many people with dyscalculia have. And I say many, not all, because there's no one type of dyscalculia. Dyscalculia can manifest itself differently in different people. But the one common thread that runs in people with dyscalculia is that they struggle with numbers and math. So those are just some of the symptoms that children with dyscalculia may have. If you've come to the realization that your child may have dyscalculia, always remember that there are ways to work around it. If you want to help your child with dyscalculia improve, you need to make a tremendous shift in your manner of teaching mathematics because they learn math differently from how the average child learns mathematics. You will need to use a whole lot more illustrations and visual aids. Visual aids such as toys and drawings and models. This is what is called multi-sensory math. Just know that your child having dyscalculia is not the end of the world. Also, it is best to seek out a professional tutor who specializes in helping children with dyscalculia improve their grades. They are the people that are best suited to help children who have this math learning disability. Now, if you've come to the realization that your child may not have dyscalculia, but they are just very bad at math, there are also ways to work around that and many ways to help them improve. I know because I personally also struggled with mathematics a lot, but I do not have this calculia. And even though I had those struggles, I was able to recover from them. In fact, I have a video all about that, and it is entitled The 5 Mistakes That I Made That Made Me Fail Math. In there, I share what went wrong and what helped me to improve. So please be sure to check it out. I will leave it linked somewhere up here. But if you are in search of someone who can help your child improve their grades in mathematics, please be sure to go down to my website and schedule a free consultation with me. I am an online math tutor and I love helping young children improve their grades. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video and I will see you in the next one.